Hello, in this video we're going to look at properties of determinants. So we'll begin with the theorem. Let A be an n by n matrix and C a non-zero scalar. Three properties follow. If B is obtained by multiplying one row or column by C, then the determinant of B equals C times the determinant of A. Next, if B is obtained by interchanging two rows or columns, then the determinant of B equals negative one times the determinant of A. Lastly, if B is obtained by adding one row or column to another, then the determinant of B equals the determinant of A. So we'll prove part A. To begin, let A be an n by n matrix and B be obtained by multiplying one row or column by C. So what that gives us, it gives us our two matrices. A, of course, is um, A11, A12, and so forth. And B is obtained by multiplying any row by this non-zero scalar C, or any column. But, you know, without loss of generality, let's just look at a particular row. I'm going to look at the kth row, so I label that row, row K. All right, now, what is the determinant of B? If we wanted to compute that, we know from previous work that the determinant of B can be obtained by this expansion along any row or column. So let's expand around row K. So expanding on row K, we have the sum as J equals 1 to N of the elements of B, which look like C times A, K, J, so that's K row J column, times the minor K, J. And let's put that uh, C in purple just to keep track of how that is uh, playing into our equation here. Well, that C is a scalar, so that could be pulled out in front of this big summation. Let's do that. And now we're left with the sum as J goes from 1 to N. A sub KJ, so we're summing along the kth row, we're summing over the columns, and that's the entries of A times the minors. And notice that this expression is simply the determinant of A, right? That's just the determinant of A. So what we've obtained is C times the determinant of, of A, and that's exactly what we set out to do. All right, so that completes our proof. Let's move on to look at a few examples. So this first example, we want to find the determinant of A where A is given, it's a three by three. And, you know, we could certainly expand along any row or column and that would involve a fair amount of work. But if we can obtain a column or row with lots of zeros, our life will be a lot easier. So zeros, I'll just say zeros are, are better because they eliminate the computation of some of those minors. So how could we get some zeros? Well, notice that column two and column three, it looks like column two is, is almost a multiple of column three. Now it's not exactly a multiple. If it were, our determinant would be zero, but I'm seeing some patterns in here. And so let's start adding column three to column two. Okay, so let's do this. Let's start with A and we will add column two and column three and we'll put the result in column two. After doing that, first column is unchanged. The third column is unchanged and our second column becomes three, negative one, and eight. That was good. But let's keep going. Let's do that again. Let's add column two to column three. Put the result in column two. So we have a four, negative one, three. Third row is, third column is unchanged. And our second column becomes a zero, zero, ten. And that looks really good because if we were to expand along the second column, we've got lots of zeros and our computations will be a lot easier. So let's do that. So the determinant of A will be equal to zero 
plus 0. Okay, now we're down to 10. So the element of a times a negative 1 to the, we're in third row, second column. So that's going to be to the fifth power times the determinant of the little 2 by 2 left over when we delete second column and that third row. So that'll be the determinant of 4, negative 3, a negative 1, and 1. This results in a negative 10 times 4 minus 3. So final answer is negative 10. Let's take a look at another example. Just put a little separator in here. So our next example, we're given a matrix A, and we're given that the determinant is 18. Now we're asked to find the determinant of B. <clears throat> so the question is, how is B different or similar than A? How did we use A to get to B? Well, look at column 2. So column 2 of B is column one of A multiplied by a scalar two. And we know how multiplying a row or column by a scalar works. We, we did that proof actually. So this tells us that the determinant of B equals two times the determinant of A. So the determinant of B must equal 2 times 18, which is 36. So that saved us a lot of work. Let's look at C. So let's go back and compare C to A. How did those two matrices compare? And it looks like we obtained matrix C by interchanging row 1 and row 2 So you can say row two and row two, row one and row two are interchanged uh, from matrix A. That's how we obtain matrix C. And if we use our properties of determinants, we know that interchanging two rows results in the following. The determinant of B is negative one times the determinant of A. In other words, our determinant here would be negative eight. Team.